The house is a hybrid between open loft-like space, but also enough separateness for each room to have its own character. Hello, welcome to Clinton Hill Courtyard House. I'm Beth O'Neill. I'm Chris McVoy. And together with our associate Russo Margashvili, we transformed a rundown carriage house into a 21st century light-filled spacious home for a young family. There are three main challenges when working with this building. A big challenge was how to carve out these volumes and maintain the structural integrity of the building to create connectivity between the different parts of the house. A big challenge was to transform the house and maintain the exterior of the building. we came through the front door, what we saw was actually a series of rooms, except for the front and the back, there was no natural light. This was an early concept sketch here, where you can see we cut a two-story volume up through the second story of the house to connect to the sky and bring light. And then we cut a second volume down through the back story to make a garden. So connecting to the sky and connecting to the earth and nature. We developed all these ideas into detailed drawings for construction. Here's a section through the sky volume. There's an angle here and there's an angle here. Whenever you flare out a wall or a ceiling, you actually create the opportunity to bring more light into the space. So that's what this was about. What it gives you is pretty remarkable. When we started the design of the house, we thought of just making the whole top of the sky volume a big skylight. And as we developed that, that was costly. We had to introduce mullions. So we ended up making two squares, a five foot by five foot square and a three foot by three foot square. And by doing that, you see the sun cast on the walls. You see the figure of the square and you actually register the movement of the light in a better way. The sky volume is made with white stained plywood and it has a kind of brachiating form. It bends towards the direction of the sky, but also branches into the bedroom and the bathroom to bring light into there. You could think of the sky volume as a piece of clothing and the epiphany skylight is part of a sleeve that comes off of a shirt into another space. Here's a diagram of how that works. This is the sky volume here with the white stained plywood. You can see this wall coming down and hanging the stair. And this is that throat or sleeve that comes in with two windows into the bathroom and a window into the master bedroom. And we position this window in the master bedroom so that when you're lying in bed, you can see through the window, through the skylight, and see the sky, the stars, or the moon. This very smoothly shuts tight when the sun is streaming in and opens in the evening. The house is zoned in a way with this garden being the heart with spaces around it. The garden is only 200 square feet, but it has a big impact on the house, bringing nature right into the middle of it. It's interesting, when you capture nature in a courtyard, it has this intensifying effect. To help bounce the light from the sky volume into the living room, we brought one wall down and that hangs the whole stair. The client challenged us to be able to design this wall in a way that she would still be able to see her children. So we came up with this idea of perforating the wall with view holes so that she could see everything going on as she's coming down the stairs. We mapped her eye height along the wall. As the holes span down from eye height, the angle of the holes increases so it maintains the view into the living room below. And then from above her eye light, we fanned the holes upward to bring light so you could see the skylight. To achieve this perforated wall idea with the different angles, we realized we needed to use digital technology, CNC milling. So we made a very detailed 3D model in the computer of every hole that then they could use to fabricate and drive their whole drill beds to be able to make all the different holes at different angles. Here's a section, a full scale section through that plywood wall, the two layers of plywood, and then each hole at the different angles. 
the stair that was here was actually completely enclosed. It was twice the size and it was a heavy concrete and steel stair. The stair itself is all open riser to allow, again, visual access. Also, you can hear everything. One of the things that you'll see are these pockets where the original floor joists were. We had to remove a few in order for the stair to work. The essence of the old building and the new building come together in this space pretty beautifully. We're very interested in working with natural materials so the concrete continues in to the kitchen. The cabinetry is a white oak, which you'll see throughout the house. There's a kind of play of shapes as you move around that are good proportions. This is a square cabinet above the stove and then some open shelving. So there's a mix of both. For the functional aspects, we integrated LED lighting, which gives you great light low down, but no glare. Uh, and then to, for the luminous volume of the space, we designed these molded acrylic light fixtures. And the idea was they're just like cubic volumes of light. So they have a soft glow, but they have a shape to the light. We decided upon a concrete floor that would have radiant heating. So not only are there no radiators or no devices, but also it's the most energy efficient because all you're doing is pumping a little bit of water through the tubes in the concrete and you're not blowing air around. And that concrete is a thermal mass that once it's heated up, it maintains its heat. Normally a concrete floor feels cold, but when you use radiant heat, it's very warm to the touch. Both of the clients are writers, and the library holds a special place in their home. They have a very large collection of books. So we located it centrally on the second floor, open to the sky volume. But you'll notice the verticals are very thin, 16th inch steel plate and even set back within the field of the shelving. And then the horizontals are an inch and a quarter white oak solid plank. And that gives you just the sense of the books and not the structure of the shelving. But when you get up close to it, you have that nice detail of the raw steel. This building is a landmark building. And in order to transform the building so completely, we also had to respect and work with Landmark's preservation. When the building was built in 1875, you wouldn't have had a natural mahogany door. This door would have been a painted door. So one of the conversations we had to have back and forth with the commission was, can we now install this beautiful mahogany door? Does it need to be painted? But a lot of times what you end up with is a really good compromise, which I think is what happened here. So you have a transom and a surround that's painted wood, and then we have our beautiful mahogany door. We finished this house two and a half years ago, and it's been a joy to return to it and see how the family is using it and filling it out with the daily life, animating the spaces. Chris and I have been working together for many years, and this has been our most challenging conversion and our most rewarding.